Riot Baby by Tochi Aniyabuchi. Oh, hi, it's Mo. It is July 22nd, and I have started reading Riot Baby by Tochi Oniyabuchi. This is a short, it's uh, like 175 page, near future slash past retelling sci-fi supernatural adventure stories of a brother and sister, and this is my TBR Tackle book for July. If you don't know what TBR Tackle is, I will have all the pertinent details listed below, but it is a super fun booktube game started by Kieran at Katie Books, where we pick 12 books for 12 months of 2022, and he gets a bookish content creator to leave us a prompt to decipher and decide what book we're reading each month. The last prompt had to do with the periodic table, and it was a super fun one. I may have misinterpreted it after watching Freshly Read Books interpretation of this prompt. I definitely think I didn't have to change out my stack as much as I actually did, but I was happy to do so because part of the fun of TBR Tackle is never knowing what books will be in your stack by the end of the prompt video. The last prompt, which was by Angela from Literary Science Alliance, also had to, a lot to do with sci-fi, and so I picked Riot Baby. And I know that she also really likes this book and this author, so I thought it fit really well. It's also extremely short. I find that I either like don't want to read my TBR Tackle book until like the very end of the month so that I can then watch the prompt video. I do vlog all my TBR Tackle books. I do watch the video for the next prompt at the end of each vlog so we can pick my next book. Or I want to read the book right away but then I don't read it right away and I kind of feel like that happened with this book. Like I wanted to read it immediately after I got that prompt but then I kind of put it off, put it off. I started reading it yesterday and I am already seven pages in and it follows Ella and Kev who are brother and sister. We start the book out with learning that Ella has premonitions, she sees people's futures, and they tend to be negative things, bad things, and she has a premonition that her baby brother is going to be born during the LA riots and she is correct. So then we jump forward in time when her family has moved from LA to Harlem and we see Kev growing up. This one is really interesting so far. There's, like I said, a supernatural element and a kind of sci-fi element, but we don't really know why Ella can see things that other people can, and we don't really know where her powers come from or what the upshot of this is. So far, it's really just a sibling narrative talking about these two people, this brother and sister, and how they interact and how they try to protect each other. I probably won't check in until the end because I only have about 100 pages left, but if something really crazy or shocking happens, maybe I'll check in in the middle and I'll let you know how this one goes. If you've read Riot Baby or if you've read Goliath, I know that KD recently read Goliath, but I haven't watched his review video yet. Let me know what you think of them and I'll catch up with you when I read some more. It is July 25th and I have finished Riot Baby. I really enjoyed this one. It is about Ella and Kev and how they grow up and how they come together and how they separate and how they come together again. It is a book about the injustices and violence and cruelty that is visited on brown and black bodies. It is about false incarceration. It is about the epidemic of drugs, gangs, and incarceration of black men. And it's just a really interesting book in the way that it deals with the real world, our reality, and the violence and injustice of our reality, 
but sprinkled with sci-fi and fantasy. This book is very much out of time, which I didn't know going into it. It starts during the Rodney King riots in LA, it moves on to Harlem, it talks about Black Wall Street and the burning of Black Wall Street, it talks about a near future police state. So there's a lot of shifting through time and memories and history and it's done in a very seamless way. I think that Onyabuchi did a really good job of dropping you into a world, putting you in a place that you didn't expect, that is in the past from where we currently are, moving you through the near past, the current timeline, into the future, into the past of slavery and early American black history, all through this connection of siblings and family. Although this is an extremely short book, I really liked that the characters were very strong, you felt very connected to Ella and Kev almost immediately, and you could really feel their sibling bond, but you could also feel their constant restraint of anger, fear, and their powers that they have inside of them. I do feel that this book was a little heavy-handed in the way that it talked about the injustices of our society against black people, just everything that that entails. Now, it's only 175 pages, so there's not much room to draw those things out. I think if it were a longer book, those themes would have been like more subtly explained or dealt with or elongated. But again, it's only 175 pages, and that really is what this book is about. On the one hand, a sibling story, but on the other hand, a story of growing up black in America and the inherent abuses that you are going to suffer from that reality. I'd be interested to read more Tochi Onyabuchi just because I wonder if this is what his writing is like for everything. Previous to this he wrote young adult novels, which I don't think I would want to read, and then after this he wrote another longer adult novel, which I've heard mixed things about. So I think I'd be interested to see like what he does next and pick that up, or maybe read some of his short stories. I think he has some short fiction and nonfiction on tour, so I think that would be a fun maybe way to get more into his work because I did really enjoy the writing style and I did like the subject matter and I did like the world building that he did. I really enjoyed the kind of out of time nature of this book, which again I wasn't expecting. This book was on my 20 books I found out about in 2020 and I wanted to read in 2021, so I got to it in 2022, not too bad, and that was my TBR tackle for July. Now it is July 25th, so there's quite a bit of time before I have to see the next TBR tackle prompt, but when that comes out I will get back to you. Something is going on with my camera. I don't know what. It is August 1st, so it is time to watch Katie's TBR Tackle video and find out what we are getting for TBR Tackle August. So I pulled up the video. Before we get started, let's just look at my stack really quick. I have Quicksand by Nella Larson. I have What Are You Going Through by Sigrid Nunez. I have... Transcendent Kingdom by Yagazi. I have The Institutionalists by Colson Whitehead, and I have Never Let Me Go by Kazu Ishiguro. So that's my current stack. Let's see if it's going to get changed. See if it's going to get messed with.
These three are my three shortest books on my TBR Tackle, The Institutionalist, Quicksand, and What Are You Going Through, which is annoying because I want to get to this one, but I have to swap them out for three longer books. So pause. Okay, so I picked two books that were previously on my TBR Tackle, Ghost Bride, Long Division made it back on because I really want to read this one. It's like 300 pages. It's upside down, but it's 300 pages. And Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead is new to the list, and it is 374. So longer than all of the other three books that I just had to take off my TBR deck list. Back to the video. Okay, that was a great video, fun prompt. Thank you, Sarah and KD. This had me swap out three short books for three longer books, my three shortest books, and then to pick from these three longest books. So I am going to pick Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead because this one is translated and August is Women in Translation Month. So this is by Olga Tarczyk. And also this is a favorite author of Karen's. So this will be a fun one to read. Last month we read a favorite author of Angela from Literature Science Alliance who did the prompt. And this month we are going to read this one. So my book for the TBR Tackle in August will be A Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead, and I'm super excited to read this one. It's a little bit longer for sure. I know that it is loosely a mystery, an older woman solving a crime, but I don't know if she's actually solving a crime. I don't know if there was actually a crime. I don't know if it's actually a mystery. So I will be super, super interested to read this one. If you want to go ahead and pick five books and then watch Karen's video and then do this prompt, you can pick a book for TBR Tackle in August. Or if you want to pick four books and wait till the September prompt comes out, you can join TBR Tackle in September. We're getting very close to the end of the year after we read our August book we will only have four books left but it doesn't mean that it's too late to join in. If you are interested in TBR Tackle, if this seems like a fun if a little bit stressful game to play for the last five months of the year, definitely feel free to join us and check out Freshly Read Books. She is an awesome booktuber, great reviews, super funny, and check out Karen at Katie Books. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!